Hey there folks, C Squared here, and today I want to do a real quick lesson on one of my favorite little tricks for playing over uh, the major seven chord. Um, now, as you might have found out, playing over major chords can sometimes be difficult because of the relationship between the tension tones in the scale and the notes in the chord. Uh, uh, specifically that the major scale has a half step between the three and the four and between the seven and the root. Uh, so anytime we're in the neighborhood of those notes in the scale, uh, we might encounter a little bit of a difficulty of phrasing around that if we don't really kind of uh, train ourselves uh, to target the right notes. Now, um, we could, we could uh, just omit those uh, hard notes permanently if we want to, uh, but the idea, I think, is to, um, the best thing is to uh, omit them for a while and work on it and then come back to them later and reintroduce those difficult notes when you know a little bit more about how to target what's in the chord because those half steps will ultimately be uh, important because tension and resolution is really what uh, music is all about. So. Um, we need to have that in there, um, even though it's difficult to handle. But like I said, at first you can kind of uh, uh, practice learning to target notes that work a little bit better um, by just omitting the hard notes or the so-called avoid notes for a little while. Now, what's the easy way to do that? Um, use pentatonic scales. That's going to be our easiest strategy. Now, you might uh, start off by going, okay, major pentatonic, major seven chord, shouldn't they go together? Well, yes and no. Um, the major pentatonic scale is uh, spelled one, two, three, or the formula is one, two, three, five, six, and the chord is one, three, five, seven. Um, now the six and the seven is not the problem, it's just when you get to the next octave with the scale, or get into higher octaves with the scale, and you're playing the root, uh, you might encounter some tension because the chord has an extension of a seventh. So the odd thing about a major seven chord is that when you're playing over it in any uh, sort of higher octave uh, than the accompaniment is, is uh, playing for that major seven, you're going to encounter um, a, a situation where the root is actually a tension tone and the seventh is the resolution. So let's hear that for a second. I'll play, I've got the C major seven chord on my looper here and I'll just play the uh, major pentatonic scale against that and we'll hear how it sort of works in places and then sort of doesn't. Okay, so starting with the root, sounds fine down low like this. There's the two, three, and I go to the five, G, fine, A, color tone, and then the C, getting a little weird now because we're up in that higher octave, there's the D, the E, and the G, now the A will be okay, but the C is going to get weird, getting weird now, it sounds like it wanted to be a B instead of a C. Okay, so what do we do? Well, if we just swap that note out, then we'll end up with a scale that's a lot easier to manage over this chord because it won't have that tension problem. So we'll have, instead of a C major uh, uh, pentatonic, we're gonna go, instead of C, D, E, G, A, we're gonna swap the C and play a B. So um, now if we get up higher and do that, you'll hear um, how this, it works up high. It also would work down low, it'll be okay, um, if we were to just think of swapping all the C's and then it becomes a, uh, another familiar scale. If you were to just reassess what you're looking at, then you're gonna go, oh, okay, it's the same notes as a G major pentatonic, also known as E minor pentatonic. So uh, that means that we could play C major seven and then play the minor, or any major seventh, play the minor pentatonic from the third degree of the chord. Um, which is the same thing as the major pentatonic from the fifth degree of the chord. So let's hear how the G major pentatonic, also known as E minor uh, pentatonic, sounds against the C major seven chord. So, so now we've omitted our problem. So that works really well. Now we've just got um, some extension tones and a couple of the chord tones in there that uh, 
that just all work together and we don't have to worry about landing on something that's weird. Um, now, another thing we could do if we want a little more color is uh, at this point we're just kind of all, even though we haven't played the fourth, everything is kind of major scale sounding because everything is just straight up uh, major or Ionian mode. So if we want to introduce uh, something to add a little color or a little flair to it, a little mysterious sound, we might want to access the, uh, the Lydian mode. To do that, we will add an F sharp in. Now, the situation with that is that F sharp or the sharp four does not produce tension uh, like a regular four. It produces kind of a color, a mysterious type of question mark musically, I like to think of it. Um, so when we do that, if we could just swap the G and play F sharp instead, out of our scale, we'd actually end up with B minor pentatonic. So we can play B minor pentatonic, also known as D major pentatonic, against that same C major seven chord, and let's hear how that sounds. So there's that Lydian note, the sharp four. Okay, we can mix it up. So that is uh, just a blend of two different uh, pentatonics that were not really derived necessarily from the root C. Uh, we just need to remember when we do this that C is still the root, so our phrasing has to kind of make sense with that chord even though it's not uh, maybe physically on the guitar looking like the scale that's associated with that chord. Um, but if you do this long enough, you'll start to uh, kind of see the chord shapes under every pattern of those pentatonics, um, sort of how they're related and it'll become easier to, uh, to blend them together and to actually phrase to the chord, uh, even though you're playing a scale that originally you might have learned uh, totally not associated with that chord. Now, another thing I just wanna circle back around and say that um, once you do this for a while, I would highly recommend that you then start reintroducing those notes that were difficult to manage in the first place. So uh, start to reintroduce the root of the chord, but just notice how you can't target that note anymore. I mean, you can if it's down low where the bass is in the chord, but if it's up higher where the, the extension is or anywhere above that extension in any octave above it, it starts to sound bad so um, if you try to target it. But you can use it for tension that will then resolve. So in that case, um, like for instance, you could play that C major seven and you can use the C, but you just need to resolve it into the B in the phrase. By Maybe even just start out by playing it uh, earlier. <laughs> okay, so by earlier, I mean before resolving onto the B. So in that case, I just played a little bit of the uh, major seven arpeggio. And you could hear how, even though I used the C in it, I wasn't targeting the C. It was just sort of dressing up the major seventh with it. Um, so anyway, I hope these ideas are helpful and you can spend some time uh, working with it. And I think you'll find out that it's uh, uh, an easy way to manage these chords that can be difficult to phrase on. Um, and, uh, and I think it'll, it'll eventually lead you into being able to, like I said, reintroduce the, uh, the difficult notes, uh, the tension tones, and, uh, and then be able to uh, have a more full idea of how to phrase on these things. Um, now, uh, my example that I played at the beginning uh, of the video was just a progression that used all major seven chords, and I'm just sort of blending those different pentatonics over each one of them. Uh, for the most part, I think I might have mixed in a few other phrases here and there uh, that were maybe not just regular pentatonic, but, uh, but maybe we'll save those ideas for another video. But, um, but mostly uh, the examples were all just pentatonics over each chord. So just to quickly tell you what it was in case you wanted to uh, make your own loop to practice over, um, it was E major seven or E major nine, actually. I just used all major nine chords. <laughs> And it was D major nine. Just moving that same chord around, C major nine. And then I went up to an E flat. And then an F. And then it just went back around. 
uh, did a little trick with the timing on it so that uh, every other time it goes around, I was instead of just playing a regular 4-4, four, four, I would divide the 4-4 uh, bar into uh, two sets of 5 sixteenths and then one set of 6 sixteenths. So um, anyway, if you heard that rhythm sounding strange, that's what that was. Um, so anyway, uh, I hope these are helpful ideas and you can work up some really uh, magnificent and epic phrasing on your major seventh chords in the future. And uh, stick around, come back for more videos on this channel. I uh, hope to be doing more lessons uh, here in the near future on here and uh, more interviews uh, with other guitar players and who knows whatever else I think up. And I will look forward to seeing you soon. So come on back. Mm -hmm.